So uh, today we will discuss about uh, uh, network models. Today we will discuss about network models and uh, continuing our last discussion. So we had various discussions of the initial parts, say uh, the protocols, then uh, the basic terminologies, the mode of communication, simplex, duplex, all those things. Then uh, we also discussed. Uh, um, what do you say the need for uh, why do we need to have these many um, uh, what do you say simple uh, physical layer devices we will discuss about the physical layer so that is the topic that comes in the second module so just to ensure continuity we just covered it there now uh, we will begin I hope you can see the slide okay you can see the slides All right hello Hello, can you see the slides? Yes, sir. Yeah, so um, only Hari is alive there. That is what uh, someone joined. If you could uh, join from the CET account, it was nice, Greta, uh, because I don't need to admit the people. It will be automatically joining. So um, otherwise, it will be uh, trouble for uh, most people. So this is a protocol. So this is protocol as we discussed last day, it specifies how people interact, different entities they interact. So entity is, you can say these are two separate um, components which enter into communication. Now this uh, Corona has brought in a lot of change in protocols. Leaders used to hug, they used to shake hands, all those things that all changed. They have adopted our Indian way of um, what do you say greeting each other so um, yeah so uh, this uh, is a protocol now um, protocols usually uh, these are organized as layers as a set of uh, what is a different layers you define uh, divide the network into different layers and each of these layers they uh, what do you say a network not in the sense network components into different layers and each of these layers interact uh, along an interface and this interaction involves some protocols some set of well-defined rules so uh, and each of these network layers they do some function now why do we need such a thing as that uh, that gives you a lot of advantages one advantage is that you can have modularity you can keep the work of one uh, layer isolated from the other and only decide how this interface has to be specified only bother about uh, the interface so uh, the final output of that layer is only the botheration you need uh, the layer one need not bother about what is the inner working of layer two only thing is that i am getting this signal with a range zero to five volts and my task is to convert that signal in zero to five volts to zero to three point three volts that will be the task of layer 2 so that way and I needn't bother of how these uh, layer 1 uh, makes uh, this 0 to 5 volts I am getting 0 to 5 volts uh, and again uh, the layer 2 uh, uh, is producing uh, this translating the signal from 0 to 5 volt to 0 to 3.3 .3 volts means uh, it needn't tell anyone what how it does that you can make any changes in that layer so um, I found a very interesting analog it's like uh, the layering so you you hope you see that okay so I cook once in a while so this uh, I usually start off with the step 12 okay making the dal all those things so you have different steps in this so the advantage is the modularity modularity you can use this for any other uh, what do you say uh, vegetable uh, dish uh, down the line i don't think so but anyway uh, you could try, uh, use it as a soup as well <laughs> so this uh, uh, in the same way uh, so reuse of functionality modularity then you need you can isolate tasks of one layer from the other so uh, same way same way you can so you're splitting up a very complex task of uh, communication between two entities into two smaller simpler tasks so that brings about uh, uh, what is a lot of uh, efficiency you can uh, separate 
the services provided by one layer from the other layer so you can isolate them so you you the only thing is that you need to specify the interfaces very clearly that the in between these two layers there will be a voltage that is exchanged which is of this range and uh, so um, so lower layer is providing services to the what is a layer above that manner so that is uh, uh, so you can replace so a uh, simple example i can say your laptop can connect to the network either by Wi-Fi or say a LAN cable. The, the speed might be different but ultimately that that is a physical layer. So physical layer is providing that connectivity. So either it could be through uh, air, uh, radio waves or you, it could be through uh, electromagnetic signal that comes through your electrical signal that comes through your LAN cable. So that is not a botheration to your browser, the application layer, which is the topmost layer, you will see that you are getting some internet connectivity. Uh, when you don't have internet connectivity, it shows you check your network cables that this, it says you have some problem with your uh, physical layer or you contact your admin, whether he has blocked you like that. So that is the only thing the topmost layer is having the idea. It, so it keeps this topmost layer. You, have, you can see, for example, your browser um, separate, uh, very, uh, what do you say, away from the complexities of sending the signal between these two. So you are splitting up the tasks. So, uh, so layered protocols, it's the analog, it's a traditional one. I found this thing in this, uh, this uh, what do you say, Ferguson's slides, say how you send this letter from uh, a person to the other so it involves you can uh, imagine in your mind you go and write the letter then you post it uh, so you most of you don't write letters except in very uh, required cases uh, most people prefer emails nowadays now it's sent your uh, what do you say uh, post office then they collect it they send it so uh, now it is facilities there for you to track it also especially the speed post so then track which path it goes then finally at the destination there is a lot of sorting happens there are intermediate routers for instance there are uh, hubs which sort letters between different within a state as, as well as outside the state maybe uh, so that things do happen uh, with the, these two people the sender and the receiver is unaware of these full process Finally, they get the letter. We say it got here very late. But we are unaware of whatever is happening in this, um, uh, the lower layers. So the lower layer is providing some service to the higher layer. So and uh, the so that is the task. So this is so this is sending something to the lower layer and it is providing some service to the higher layer. So you can you only specify the interface here the interface is the person then there is the postman again the postal network finally again the postman so um, some terminologies some terminologies uh, in this uh, connection these are uh, from the slides uh, what do you say it's not my pick figures so you use have a layered protocols so layered protocols you say that um, uh, you have peers. Peers are say you can layers at the same level. These are called as peers. So in your class you are all a peer group. Peer group. Peer group means people who interact at the same level. So uh, I am not in the same peer group as uh, what is a senior professor in a uh, institute. So I will be in the what is a among the assistant professors. So it is a peer group. You can say that we, although we do not have such a distinction but uh, when you um, at the person level when you interact officially we do have you won't interact with the principal in the same way as I may be interacting with the say Sanod sir or Lalu sir so um, that is the difference so then again the services services um, are provided by a lower layer to the higher layer so different services are provided say this is an providing encryption decryption services send mail receive mail services by this layer this is a, a abstract concept then there is a uh, there is something which is called as a logical connection say finally 
uh, if you take the case, um, uh, this logical connection case will be clear uh, when you come to the next encapsulation, decapsulation, that part. But uh, finally, these two layers, the peer layers, layer 2 and layer 2 in these two entities, they interact in some way through some specific language which is understood by uh, some specific symbols or languages which are understood through languages, symbols or mechanisms which are understood only by these two layers because that functionality is present in these two layers. So you can say there is a logical connection between these two layers. For example, say it might be some bits in the message which are uh, set by this layer and which will be understood only by this layer. Say it, it might say that I have encrypted this uh, message. Uh, for these lower layer, it won't be, it won't, it will be just another bit, 0 or 1. Say, but uh, when it, when the message reaches this layer, it will say that, uh, yeah, this sender has encrypted the message. So, I need to decrypt it. And the encryption is done using this particular algorithm that will be made aware in this layer. So, there is a logical connection between these two layers, even though there is a direct physical there is no direct physical connection between these two layers. The physical connection exists only these between these lowest layers. So that uh, will make it clear. Okay, so there is a logical connection as well as a physical connection. That's to be understood. So uh, there uh, historically there were two um, network models. So we network models are organized as layered models, and uh, the the most uh, what do you say floppish. I can say flop model was the OSI model. It was the first one. It, why it flopped? We'll see. Um, I'll share a document in the classroom. We won't discuss the reasons here in the class. Uh, it's a uh, what is a two-page thing. You can you can read it. It's a slide handout. Other one is a TCP/IP model. TCP/IP model is now running the show. It's running the inter internet. Unless we have some other alternate models coming up, this will be the. This is going to be the. Uh, this is the protocol which we are using. The OSI model was not a protocol, rather it was a model to sp uh, specify how, what do you say, two different communication entities, they interact. Nothing more than that. Uh, they, it didn't specify uh, what should be within the layers, all those things. We will come to that. So, open system interact interconnection model or OSI model, so that OSI model so it's a, a seven layer model actually and it was in the 70s so uh, they started work on that and then they revised it and finally no one um, used it but still it serves as a um, model it's an open protocol open not protocol open model it's uh, published by the ISO so that no one was compelled to follow it it was a standard there set up by these people and uh, there were a lot of politics uh, involved as uh, to decide what was what should be the content of one particular layer like that and they ended up accommodating all people and ended up with a model which did not work at the same time the tcpip as well as unix these were popular in the academic communities the universities and it was free as well and uh, there was a lot of work going on in that and finally that was adopted that became the industry standard like that so uh, not much support for osi model that's uh, that's one reason it failed so the it is uh, uh, how it is facilitating communication between these systems so as mentioned it is not a protocol rather it is a model to understand how this a uh, network architecture the reasons why they came for this osi model is that we should allow heterogeneous networks to interact that is what interoperable networks say it might be a computer which runs uh, uh, a different operating system I, we didn't have windows all those things in this time so uh, see it should be operable across diverse networks it should be robust robust in the sense it should be able to withstand uh, what do you say failure in one component uh, so some uh, th that was the, these are very good ideas, flexibility, all those things were very uh, good ideas, uh, but uh, 
unfortunately it didn't take off so to facilitate um, so without any ma making any change in this hardware or the software details you should be able to make a communication between uh, two entities possible two or more entities possible so this these are the seven layers say you say that it is the application layer this is the topmost layer it's called the seventh layer it's a seven layer then presentation layer session layer transport layer network layer data link layer and physical layer so physical layer is called as a layer one so physical layer is what we uh, usually see and there is an acronym uh, mnemonic what uh, it will be it can be used to study that so i usually use this thing okay apst and dp so that it is um, in sequence don't uh, what is it get these two letters uh, what is it exchanged so this is some way to remember that you might be able to remember it in a better way also so um, so this is a seven layered pro, uh, model and they proposed this in the ISO standards and uh, they revised it as well but uh, no one accepted it now this looks very uh, strange diagram but still we'll see uh, we discussed most of the things in this fi figure uh, these are the seven layers then there is an interface between these two layers so interface don't come to this now this we'll take it up later then um, interface between these two layers so this interface is this uh, what do you say is clearly specified say application layer presentation layer interface one example for an application layer software is your browser or your what is a chat software whatever uh, these are the application layer software that's keep keeping uh, that's hiding you the uh, hiding from you the details that work beneath for instance when you uh, punch in your website say www.google.com there is a lot of processes happening behind the background there is a lot of handshakes happening between the various nodes there is a dns working they're just translating this uh, text the web address into what is a ip then there is uh, what is a communicating to that server all those things are kept hidden from you and ultimately you are getting the data from that it's displayed on a browser that's the role of the application layer so you are uh, so you are not uh, aware of those things now uh, this is a logical connection this is what the peer to peer protocol so there is some protocol which is running in the application each of these layers one or more protocols which are running on each of these layers say for instance um, say even though uh, it's uh, really uh, relevant to the tcp ip model you can say a transport layer protocol is udp and tcp these are two transport layer, layer protocols in the internet model a tcp ip they are in the transport layer but so this will be running on each of these what do you say um, layers each of these entities so the sender and the receiver so they can communicate by a specific signals as I already mentioned they can communicate by some sort of bits or something like that so there is a peer to peer protocol again the intermediate nodes you can say this you call them as routers or uh, so intermediate nodes so they are helping in this you are not having a direct physical line from point a to point b rather you have some intermediate nodes so um, so intermediate nodes will run some of these a subset of these broader protocols because they need to decide how um, uh, to which address you have to send this thing so they will examine some component of this uh, message which is being transmitted from device A to device B so um, that uh, uh, we will come to the next thing so you uh, come uh, to this um, figure and just we will wind up this is called as an encapsulation and decapsulation process say so here you have the sender A and the receiver B and these are connected by a transmission medium say for instance we will assume that is a cable a LAN cable now uh, it's generating some data which is called as D7 and it has adds to this data some header header information header information 
something like the sending address, receiving address, they say something number of bytes, then error correction codes, all those things. Checksum, all those things could be there. Then it's sent to the next lower layer. Layer this for this particular layer, all those things will be some data. Some data. It will be putting it, it will be encapsulating that data into uh, its frame and it will be adding its own header telling that this header will be used to communicate with the peer header in the receiver side that is what similarly the same process happens this encapsulation encapsulation so encapsulation of this data uh, from the higher layer so this process is the encapsulation process so usually at layer uh, 2 that means uh, uh, physical data link data link layer so data link layer. if you remember here this is the data link layer so data link layer uh, usually add something called as a trailer trailer is used for what do you say uh, error detection error detection usually uh, so CRC codes are you can check some all those things that will be added uh, to the message trailer means it is at the tail tail end and finally all those things are converted to bits your modem you can say modem is converting all this uh, uh, to zeros and ones here everything is zeros and ones the meaning is assigned in the corresponding layer at the receiving side so all these say I'll say this frame starts from here only this uh, layer 2 knows and this much is the trailer and this much is a header only that particular layer knows this layer doesn't know neither this layer so when this packet is passed this process of unwrapping the message that is what we call as decapsulation decapsulation so decapsulation encapsulation happens at the sender side and decapsulation happens at the receiver side hope it is clear so and then finally you receive the message so uh, the application layer in the topmost layer will be receiving this message so uh, this is kept transparent to these two people they are not aware of these uh, this is kept hidden from these two people they are not aware of what process happens now uh, we'll examine the role of each of these layers each of these layers uh, in the next uh, session okay and um, that will be uh,